Welcome aboard Arwen. She's my 14 foot John Wellsford Design Navigator Yawl. And she's got a standing lug rig. Um, I built her with no carpentry skills whatsoever. And that is probably the understatement of the year, for she is a little rough and ready. The boat's built. I'm sailing in stunning scenery. Uh, the learning sail bit is taking a bit longer. Well, that's putting it mildly. The finer art of rigging and sail trimming seem to have escaped me for now, as you are about to find out in today's vlog. I'm just sorting out the sails here. Um, if you've been reading and following my blog um, over the last year or so, you'll know that I've got this diagonal crease in my sail, which is a bit of a problem. And it doesn't matter what trimming I do on the snotter or the outhaul or the downhaul, um, I can't get rid of it. Um, so I went to Facebook and a number of people very kindly um, proposed a number of um, possible scenarios and reasons why I might have this um, crease. So what I'm doing now is I am taking off the sail and the first thing they've all suggested is um, moving the sail up the yard. A quick perusal of my last but one video will show what a substantial difference just this alteration has made to sail shape. And now for a quick tour of Arwen, starting with the jib roller furler at the bowsprit. Its control line leads aft across the deck, down the starboard cockpit combing side and through a hole to a cleat mounted on the lower seat combing from where it is easily accessible. Returning to the bowsprit. I installed a simple block and tackle bob stay to not only make trailer launch and retrieval easier, but also as a means of increasing or decreasing the tension on the bowsprit and consequently the jib force stay when out at sea. Adjustable from the mast base, my kids used to love going forward to pull on the bob stay halyard. Attached to the stem, are a short white painter and a longer blue line. The white painter ends in a stainless steel shackle loop and it runs from the fair lead down the starboard side of the boat and outside of the shrouds to where it is then clipped on the inside of the cockpit. I use it as a quick temporary warp when coming alongside mooring buoys. The shrouds are another child pulling rope creation, which I've never really bothered to alter. With father child homemade blocks, they are attached by white line lashings. I guess the main advantage, if there is one, is that I can retention the mast and the shrouds easily when at sea. On each bow quarter, there are fenders permanently attached along with deck mooring cleats. You can also find a paddle for when creeks become too narrow for the sensible use of oars. My jib halyard runs from its furler swivel through a mast head block, down at the mast and through the deck to a turning block and a cleat mounted on the centre case spine. The jib sheets lead aft down the cockpit combing sides, being held in place by upright blocks and deck eyes. On the other side of each combing, there are tufnel blocks for when visitors crew aboard. However, when I am single handing, I lead the jib sheets to large eyes and another centre case mounted cleat, which makes them far more accessible. Alongside the eight foot oars securely attached to their rollocks and secured at their aft end for during transport, there are two boat hooks, one on each side deck. However, as you can see by all the scars on Arwen's rub strips, 
These boat hooks rarely get used, on account of me normally hitting the boys as I come alongside them. Rudder rigging is simple and is pretty much as per the plans. Well, almost. There's a simple uphaul and downhaul and a tiller securing pin. The tiller has a rudimentary Huntington tiller impeder on it, which, whilst looking rather dodgy, does actually work very effectively. A simple tiller extension is attached with a universal joint, which allows me to sit well forward on upwind stretches. It is more secure than it looks, and has actually stood up to some impressive weather helm stress at times. Along the top of the tiller and along the side are kick up and normal cleats which secure the rudder sheets. Although I haven't attached the boomkin or unfurled the mizzen in this vlog, the mizzen sheet runs through the cockpit combing to a mounted cleat. The downhaul runs through a small block at the base of the mast to a transom top mounted cleat. Across the boat, in various strategic locations, are GoPro mounts with their securing loops, which help keep the cameras safe whilst filming at sea. When it comes to the sprit boom snotter arrangements, I have deviated somewhat from the plans, and maybe I shouldn't have done. The block and tackles are attached to a movable rope lashing on the mast and permanently lashed in place at the forward end of the boom. From the forward end of this boom also rungs a bungee cord down to the deck to prevent the boom from springing up and down. The snotter sheet runs down through the deck, around a turn block on the front thwart and back along the port side of the centreboard case to a cleat mounted at the rear of the casing. On the boom, whilst there are boom cleats for snotter and reefing lines, I've deviated from the plans once again in my reefing line arrangements. I'm not honestly sure whether this is a good idea or not, but I've opted for a symbol reefing line with a hook, held in place on the boom until such time as it is needed for the first reef. In a previous video, you can see what a shambolic rat's nest there was on the aft end of the boom during my previous reefing system. Bolted through the aft end of the boom, I did use a rather big main sheet block and tackle system originally. Useless of course in light winds, and you can see that I've now simplified it by only going through one block turn. The lower main sheet block is securely screwed to a large mahogany block of wood, securely glued and screwed to the rear transom deck and combing. The leather strips stop the block from damaging the combing edges. The downhaul tackle has been a significant misjudgment on my part and a major factor in the poor sail trimming for many years on board Arwen. Here is my new arrangement. It runs down through the deck bringing the sail tack much closer to the mast base and the paddle beads. Lengthening the distance between the blocks has enabled me to gain far greater downhaul tension and hopefully this will go some way now to eliminating the sail creases and giving better luff and leech tension. The messy arrangement shows my inability to understand or follow a simple clear and concise rigging plan instruction and whilst it looks awful it does actually work. Throughout Arwen, there is ample below deck and thwart storage lockers. Each of the larger lockers has hasp locks of different sizes which can be padlocked when I'm ashore. They are mainly just a visual deterrent, 
that not really secure system. However, they protect the safety equipment, toolkits, fuel bottles and foul weather gear. The camera's GPS etc. gets carried with me in a small rucksack when I'm off on a shore jaunt. Under side deck storage holds fenders, portable bilge pump and various bits and pieces needed on a day sail such as navigation equipment. I carry two anchors stored securely in trays on the front cockpit floor. The smaller picnic hook anchor has an elastic beach buddy attached making it easier to retrieve the boat off beaches or rocky river coastlines. The larger Bruce anchor is ridiculously too big and when funds become available I will replace it. An idea I stole from navigator owner Joel Bergen are the boarding loops on each side. Easily accessible after a capsize, along with the 12 foot yellow knotted rope boarding lines, they help me clamber back onto the centreboard or back into Arwen after a capsize writing. Please feel free to comment in the boxes below. All constructive advice and tips are always welcome. Why not subscribe, download a playlist, visit my blog and join Arwen and I next time on our future voyages and learning journeys together. We look forward to catching up with you.